A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I'm finally back from my Italy vacation. It was pretty fun and we're going to continue with mathematics here on this channel as well as woodworking videos over on Flemish Wood which are also going to be highly connected to this channel right here. So definitely make sure to subscribe to Flemish Wood too to not miss out on any content whatsoever. Link in the description. Now for one of the videos over on Flemish Wood we actually need the so-called harmonic addition theorem which we are going to basically approve today. It's one of the most useful trigonometric identities I know about and I was using it extensively in theoretical physics and non-linear dynamics. Um, it has to do with these boys right here stable and unstable spirals as well as centers. And you can find the link to the harmonic oscillators and the Laplace transforms down there in the description where we also use the harmonic addition theorem. But we didn't know that it was called the harmonic addition theorem. It was something um, I didn't give a name to. It was just a consequence of the phase space. But today we are going to show that we can express each and every addition of sines and cosines as some kind of cosine or sine wave with a different coefficient and a so-called phase shift. Namely, we are going to show that we can express it a sum like this as sum eta, which is the amplitude you could say, times the cosine of our angle phi that we got right here plus some initial displacement t or phi naught or whatever you want to call it. And I'll leave it as an exercise to the reader or the fewer, <laughs> I should rather say, to derive the same identity that we do for the cosine for the sine. You can actually also express this summation of sines and cosines as something of this form just with a sine in the front instead of a cosine. And now we are going to dive right in and I hope you are going to enjoy the video. Now, what we are going to make use of is the so-called addition theorem for the cosine. You can find the link to the corresponding video down there in the description. We have used it extensively in the last time for some odd reason. Did do a lot of videos on trigonometry on this channel last time. Now, the cosine of phi plus t is the same as saying we get, okay, eta is our coefficient. Now, if we got the addition of arguments in the cosine, cosine is not linear. This is not the same as the cosine of phi plus the cosine of t. No, this is not the case. But rather, this is equal to the cosine of phi times the cosine of t. And then minus, we get a negative sign in the middle, minus the sine of phi times the sine of t. And that's what we got right here. And do not forget this is equal to the addition of our sine and cosine waves. Now what we are going to do now is we are going to track our eta into everything. We are going to multiply everything out, meaning we get an eta in the front of these two multiplied together and then minus eta in the front of these sines multiplied together. And now you might see something, namely we are going to equate this one with this side. Okay, and you are going to notice that on the B part we are going to get the sine of phi. Okay, we also get the sine of phi on this side, and on the A part we get the cosine of phi. We also get the cosine of phi on this side. Meaning, what we are going to do is we are just going to compare coefficients and we are going to equate these to one another. Namely, I'm going to write it under it. You can put an equivalence right here if it's not an equation once again. It needs to be a statement. Now on the one hand we get that eta times the cosine of phi times the cosine of t is equal to a times the cosine of phi. And then we are also going to get that this part right here, negative eta sine of phi sine of t is also equal to b times the sine of phi. And now we are going to equate these. What are the coefficients of the cosine of phi and sine of phi respectively? Well on the one hand we are going to get this is supposed to be a curly bracket, I'm terribly sorry, that a times, no, that a is equal to eta times the cosine of t. We are just going to compare these. I hope you can see this. Okay, covering this up, we are going to be left with a being equal to eta times the cosine of t. And on the other hand, we are going to get that b is equal to, hmm, okay, we get a negative sign in the front. Here we got a positive sign, but this time we get a negative sign, eta times the sine of t. And this is basically all the magic that is going to happen here. And now we can start finding out what eta is actually going to be. Well, on the one hand, we are going to notice that if we were to square both equations that we got right here, 
we are going to get overall that a squared is equal to eta squared times the cosine squared of t. And on the other hand, we are going to get that b squared is equal to eta squared times the sine squared of t. And now we are just going to add these two equations together. Meaning overall, we are going to get that a squared plus b squared, this is the left hand side, is equal to, now we are going to get eta squared as a common factor. And then we are going to get the cosine squared plus the sine squared. And we know this is something that we have showed just um, a few days ago. The cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1. Meaning overall, eta, our coefficient, our amplitude that we are going to get here, is equal to plus or minus the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so we got what our eta is, but we got one other unknown in our equation. Namely, we get the t. How can we extract our t from this system's, uh, system of equations? Well, what we are going to do is we are going to divide both equations by one another. It really doesn't matter in which way you do it. You can either get the cotension out or you get the tension out. What we are going to do is we are going to divide the second equation by the first equation. Namely, if we were to divide these, we are going to get that b divided by a is equal to. And now just, we are going to take this in the numerator and this right here in the denominator. Eta and eta is going to cancel out, giving us overall negative the sine of t divided by the cosine of t. And now sine divided by the cosine is going to be just the tangent. We are going to multiply both sides by negative 1 because it's not equal to 0 because it's a predecessor of 0. So by definition, this doesn't work out. So negative b divided by a is equal to the tangent of t. And now what we are going to do is if our tangent is bijective, meaning it's on the interval from negative power over 2 to power over 2, we are going to take the inverse tangent on both sides, giving us overall that t is equal to the inverse tangent of negative b divided by a, or since the inverse tangent is an odd function, this is the same as saying we get negative the inverse tangent of b divided by a. And these are all the unknowns that we need. And now we can plug them into our equation and then we are done with the harmonic addition theorem. Namely, what we are going to get is that the addition of these cosine and sine waves, a cosine of phi times b sine of phi, is ultimately equal to plus or minus the square root of a squared plus b squared, which was our a eta, times the cosine of, and now we got our angle phi, and our phase shift is negative, the inverse tangent of b divided by a. And as mentioned before, I leave it as an exercise to the dear viewer to figure out what the harmonic addition theorem looks like if you get a sine right here instead of a cosine. It's not much different, it's just a shift in pi over 2 as you might guess. But I leave it to you to figure this one out. And there are actually other ways to derive this. As mentioned before, you can derive all of this in the phase space too. Because what we got right here, this part, is actually nothing other than the solution to the differential equation of the free pendulum, for example. And then what you can do is you can draw yourself the phase space, which is going to result. So if we got our um, angular velocity right here and our angle here, this right here is the so-called stable center. Okay, it's just a pendulum going all the time without friction, basically in terms of a sine and a cosine wave. And then you can put yourself a little diagram in here, a right triangle in this unit circle or just circle in general. And then you can say that this right here is the amplitude, which was our eta. And what we got here are respectively our initial conditions on our um, phi dot and phi and what we got right here is our t. This right here is our angular displacement that we got at the beginning of the problem. And then you can start um, figuring the formula out that we got right here. And it's going to result in the same thing. Amplitude times the cosine of something minus the phase shift. And this is the harmonic addition theorem. And I hope you did enjoy this video. A very, very important theorem that you should always remember because it makes your life uh, way easier, even in integration, if you were to use it. And if you want to see more content like this, if you're interested in more trigonometry, complex numbers, maybe nonlinear dynamics or, phys or physics in general, then I invite you to try the content of today's sponsor Brian, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel.
And when I think about nonlinear dynamics and chaos physics in general, I always think about differential equations, initial value problems, and for example, eigenvalue problems when it comes to solving nonlinear systems. You need these for linear approximations of solutions to nonlinear systems. And stuff like this can be learned over on Brilliant, and in a very nice manner it is. Now, Brilliant is your source for some of the best online learning content out there on the internet, at least in my opinion. And they are going to provide you with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it physics, mathematics, computer sciences, etc. Whatever it is you want to learn, linear algebra, physics, trigonometry, they got something up their sleeve. And all of this is underlined with a lot of cool animations and interactive learning content that you can use. And if this feels like something for you, definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, preentorg slash flammablemaths to get free access to a big portion of Preent already, but more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% off an annual Preent subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much new content they are adding on the website on a regular basis. And they brush up on all the courses to make them even better than they already were. And it's such a good experience. I really love using Pre and, and I'm so glad that they are a sponsor of this channel. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. If you enjoyed this video, then also make sure to subscribe to the channel and to share the video around. Don't forget to also subscribe to Flemmy's Wood and to check out stemmerch.eu for handcrafted stem products. And now until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!